I just wanted to go over a few things that uh, I realized I'd missed in the first video in this series where I was uh, showing you around the tabletop simulator mod and setting up the scenario as well. So first, I forgot to mention cameras in the introduction to the mod. So I've got these set up here and I'm pretty sure they are transferred over to the mod in the workshop so you should be able to run with these as well. But if you were to press shift plus a number between 1 and 9 on the actual keyboard, not on the number pad, you will be able to get to the cameras. And shift 1 is the top left corner here. That's the tallies and air combat charts. Uh, shift 2 takes you down to the wing display. Shift 3 takes you to the sequence of play. Shift 4 takes you to the bombing and the battle display on the right at the top. Shift 5 gives you a, an overview of the board. Shift 6 takes you off to the right where all the bags or the counters are. Shift 7 takes you over to where all the tallies and alert counters and so on are. Shift 8 takes you to the bottom right wing display, so the other wing display uh, that we're not using in this scenario. And Shift 9 will take you back to the sequence of play again. So um, they're all preset. You can adjust them if you basically, if you move to a new view, and I think you have to press control and the number that you want to set the camera to, then it will record that position. And then when you press shift and that number, then it will take you back to that position. But the way I've got it set up here, hopefully should be enough to cover every situation. I guess like shift and nine is like a leftover one that I couldn't really think of what to put on there. So I just put it back to the sequence of play again. One thing that you could use the shift nine camera position for is when you're actually getting into the thick of the uh, scenario and you're you're doing combats and so on um, you can actually set the camera to just go over here so if there's a big combat happening down here you can just move your camera to this position and press control and nine and then that will set camera nine to always come back to the combat so that when you're off looking at other tables and so on you can just quickly get back to where you want to be so that's i recommend doing that for the camera nine position uh, and another thing to note with the cameras in general is that they only work for the host of the server any other player if you're playing this as a two-player game won't have access to those cameras they'll have to they can set them up themselves but only the host will have access to those preset cameras that I've included here and that's unfortunately that's just how tabletop simulator works so keep that in mind another thing while I'm looking at it here is uh, the dice roller here you can copy that move it around or whatever I keep it up here because usually I'm rolling dice on here but if you want to just move it down to somewhere closer to the action if you wanted or make a copy of it or do anything like that then feel free it doesn't have to be just stuck up there if it's not in a convenient spot but i think that worked for me anyway so that's the the extra stuff i wanted to show you from the mod itself the mistakes or omissions or whatever that i made in the setup just to be clear uh, aside from me not putting the vectors on initially, which um, I was going to do when I actually started the game, but I, I put the vectors on here now for the uh, Chinese squadrons. Another thing that I didn't do was putting the bomb load counters on the wing display. So if we actually uh, have a closer look here, there's these bomb loads that are on the bombers. They They serve to slow the bombers down. Uh, I'll get to that when we go over the movement. But, you know, they, they act as a penalty on the bomber's speed. Some of the other planes can have other things like drop tanks and missiles and so on. Um, it'll say that on the aircraft data cards, which I've got, uh, I've got copies of here for reference, just to make it a bit easier. 
uh, like you'll see that some of these say drop tanks um, they are not actually included in the scenario unless the scenario itself says that those planes should have drop tanks so think of it if you see them on on the adcs here think of that as you know they can potentially have drop tanks but they will only have them in a scenario if it actually specifies that they do whereas the bombers always have the bomb load on them unless the scenario says that they don't and these are the bombers here because the whole point of them is that they're on their way to drop bombs on something so unless the scenario is like they're on their way back from a bombing run and they get caught or something like that so they've dropped their bombs already they'll have uh, the bomb loads on them at the beginning so it's important to to put that on at the start the other thing was that i had put one of these uh, escorts or the things that are standing in for the escorts i had put that in this square and they're actually not allowed to be there because escorts can only be a maximum of one altitude level below the bombers that they're escorting uh, they can be up to three above they can't be in front of them they can't be down here basically so i moved this one back up one spot so this is no longer in the wispy clouds so that's the only thing i think i i did wrong uh in terms of where the planes go everything else should be fine so with that we can uh, get on to starting the actual scenario